Hello there, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Kindly subscribe, comment, like, and also share. It's so hilarious that three years after Meghan talked with Oprah, the royal family is still trying to discredit her by using their white in-laws to tell us how they were welcomed with open arms. This is actually shocking. Forget the crumbling NHS, the cost of living crisis, or even Prince Andrew's questionable associates. The real threat to the monarchy, apparently, is that American actress. Yes, the media frenzy would have you believe that Meghan Markle is the root of all royal woes. Yes, Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, continues to haunt the hallowed halls of Windsor Castle, a phantom menace to the very fabric of British society. Her every move, every word, dissected and analysed as if she holds the key to the monarchy's future. It's enough to make one wonder if the royal family has considered a career in reality television. The drama, the intrigue, the sheer absurdity of it all. It's a spectacle that rivals the most sensational TV shows. The drama, the intrigue, the sheer absurdity of it all. One might think, after the Sussexes' seismic departure from royal life, that the dust would settle, the tabloids would find a new target, looking at you, Prince George's wardrobe choices, and the royals themselves would retreat to their gilded cages, occasionally emerging to wave at tourists. But no, occasionally emerging to wave at tourists. But no, the saga continues, fueled by a steady drip of palace leaks, carefully curated public appearances, and the occasional passive-aggressive Instagram post. The saga continues, fueled by a steady drip of palace leaks, carefully curated public appearances, and the occasional passive-aggressive Instagram post. It's a masterclass in pettiness, a display of royal peak that would make even the most seasoned soap opera writer blush. The question is, why? It's a masterclass in pettiness, a display of royal peak that would make even the most seasoned soap opera writer blush. The question is, why? Why this relentless focus on a woman who dared to walk away, who dared to speak her truth, who dared to challenge the very foundations of an institution desperately clinging to relevance in the 21st century? Why this relentless focus on a woman who dared to walk away, who dared to speak her truth, who dared to challenge the very foundations of an institution desperately clinging to relevance in the 21st century? The answer, dear viewers, is more uncomfortable, more insidious than a simple case of royal pettiness. The answer, dear viewers, is more uncomfortable, more insidious than a simple case of royal pettiness. It speaks to something rotten at the heart of the monarchy, something that goes far beyond one woman's experience. It speaks to a legacy of colonialism, of white supremacy, and of a deeply ingrained resistance to change. It speaks to something rotten at the heart of the monarchy, something that goes far beyond one woman's experience. It speaks to a legacy of colonialism, of white supremacy, and of a deep the monarchy's obsession with Meghan Markle is a symptom of a larger issue, a reflection of its struggle to adapt to a world that is increasingly questioning its place and purpose. The question remains, will the monarchy evolve, or will it continue to cling to outdated ideals, risking its own obsolescence? In the royal family's ongoing game of damage control, one pawn has emerged as surprisingly versatile, Meghan Markle's own family. The drama surrounding Meghan Markle and her relationship with the British royal family has captivated the world, and at the heart of this spectacle lies a complex web of familial ties and public perception. Specifically, her father, Thomas Markle, and half-sister, Samantha Markle, have been more than happy to provide the British tabloids with a steady stream of unflattering anecdotes, thinly veiled barbs, and outright fabrications. Their willingness to speak out against Meghan has only fueled the media frenzy, adding layers of intrigue and controversy to an already volatile situation. It's a reality TV producer's dream, the estranged family members, the bitter accusations, the public airing of dirty laundry. The spectacle is almost too perfect, as if scripted for maximum drama and viewer engagement. The public can't seem to get enough of the unfolding saga, eagerly consuming every new revelation and scandalous detail and the royals, it seems, are perfectly content to let it play out. By allowing Meghan's family to dominate the narrative, the royal family can maintain a semblance of distance and neutrality, all while benefiting from the negative press directed at Meghan. After all, what better way to discredit a woman of colour speaking out against an institution steeped in white privilege than to trot out her own white family members to denounce her? This tactic serves to undermine Meghan's credibility, 
and paint her as the antagonist in her own story. It's a tactic as old as time, a way to paint Megan as the angry black woman, the troublemaker, the one who can't possibly be telling the truth because, look, even her own family doesn't believe her. This narrative plays into deeply ingrained stereotypes and biases, making it easier for the public to dismiss Megan's experiences and grievances. Never mind that Megan has been estranged from her father and half-sister for years. Never mind that their claims have been repeatedly debunked. Never mind that they have a clear financial incentive to keep peddling their stories to the highest bidder. The truth becomes irrelevant in the face of sensationalism and the allure of a juicy story. The mere fact that they are white, that they share Megan's DNA, is enough to give their words a veneer of legitimacy in the eyes of a public primed to believe the worst about a biracial woman who dared to marry into the royal family. This dynamic highlights the intersection of race, power and media influence, revealing the underlying prejudices that shape public opinion. This calculated use of Meghan's family is not just a cynical PR move, it's a chilling reminder of the ways in which race and power intersect. It serves as a stark illustration of how institutions can manipulate personal relationships and societal biases to maintain control and protect their image. It exposes the hypocrisy of an institution that claims to be colorblind while simultaneously weaponizing the voices of white family members to silence a woman of color speaking her truth. This ongoing saga is a powerful commentary on the lengths to which those in power will go to preserve their status and the systemic challenges faced by those who dare to challenge the status quo. Let's play a little game, shall we? It's a game that many of us have been unwittingly playing for years, a game that reveals more about our society than we might care to admit. It's called Spot the Difference. But this isn't your typical game of finding hidden objects or subtle changes in pictures. In Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, vilified by those same tabloids, criticised for everything from her fashion choices to her breathing. Meghan, an accomplished actress and humanitarian, has been portrayed as a disruptor, an outsider who doesn't fit the mould. What could possibly explain this stark contrast in treatment? Why is one Duchess celebrated while the other is condemned? Could it be, dare we say it, race? The evidence is overwhelming. The difference in their treatment is not just a matter of personal preference or media bias. It's a reflection of deeper societal issues. From the thinly veiled racist undertones of articles comparing Meghan's exotic looks to Kate's more traditional beauty, to the outright racist attacks on social media, it's clear that Meghan has been held to a different standard, judged by a different set of rules. The scrutiny she faces is relentless and often unfounded. The double standard is as blatant as it is infuriating. It's a reflection of the biases that still permeate our society, biases that are often ignored or dismissed. This isn't just about a few nasty headlines or some online trolls. It's about the pervasive nature of racism and how it infiltrates even the most seemingly benign aspects of our lives. It's about the insidious ways in which racism permeates our society, how it manifests in the seemingly innocuous comparisons, the subtle digs and the overt attacks. These microaggressions, these constant small and often unintentional slights, accumulate over time, wearing down even the strongest of spirits. They create an environment of hostility and exclusion. Meghan Markle's experience is a stark reminder of the work that still needs to be done. It's a call to action for all of us to recognize and challenge these biases, to strive for a society where everyone is judged by the same standards, regardless of their race or background. Remember that time Oprah basically broke the internet? No, not when she gave away all those cars. We're talking about Interview, the one where Meghan and Harry spilled the royal tea and sent shockwaves across the globe. It was the interview heard, round the world, a bombshell revelation that exposed the rot beneath the polished veneer of the British monarchy. Meghan, eloquent and composed, spoke about the relentless attacks from the British tabloids, the lack of support from the royal institution, and the casual racism she experienced within the palace walls. The most damning allegation? A member of the royal family expressing concerns about the skin colour of her unborn child. The world watched, captivated as Meghan dared to speak truth to power, to lift the curtain on a world shrouded in secrecy and privilege. It was a watershed moment, a turning point in the conversation about race, privilege, and the monarchy's place in a rapidly changing world. The reaction from the palace? predictable. Denials, deflections, and a healthy dose of recollections may vary. 
The Queen, in a rare public statement, expressed concern about the allegations, but insisted that some recollections may vary. It was a masterclass in passive-aggressive PR, a way to acknowledge the hurt without actually taking responsibility for the harm inflicted. Never underestimate the power of a good whisper campaign.